Okay, so I have this new software called Fluid Math, and it is really amazing, so I thought I'd share with you all some of the basic features of it. And I haven't had it very long, so I'm still trying to get my handwriting to be recognized on a regular basis. But basically, you've got these uh, regular draw pins here. So the first things we'll be doing is simplifying and approximating. Okay, and anytime I want to do something that's mathematical, I hit this little math button there. And now it is in math mode. Uh, you see, didn't like that, so I need to, if I want to erase it, I just scratch it out and redo it. And did you all see that? It will adjust its answer depending on what numbers I put in there. It can do fractions. 312 over 240. There's the fraction form. And if I want to know the decimal approximation, I do a double arrow. Oh, didn't like that, did it? So I'm going to put 10. There, there's a decimal form, 1.3. It can do radicals. The square root of 50 is 5 root 2. Or, well, let me move that. The square root of 50 is approximately 7.07. .07. Uh, it can even deal with imaginary numbers. The square root of negative 16 is 4i. You can work with exponents. Well, I thought that was 13. Let me see. 4 thirds. There we go. 81. It can handle logarithms. The log of 16 base 2. I didn't like the way I put the 16. There we go. It's 4. And trig functions. The sine of 5 pi. Uh, like I said, I'm still getting used to my handwriting here. The sine of 5 pi over 4. There we go. Is. Uh, negative 2 root. Negative root 2 over 2. Alright. It can also factor things. So, for example, if I'd like to factor x squared, okay, let me go over here, x squared minus 3x minus 10, I just do the arrow, and there it is, factored, x minus 5 times x plus 2. It can simplify rational expressions. to the fourth y to the negative 3 over 6 y squared x cubed. And that simplifies to x over 3 y to the fifth. It can even recognize and evaluate sigma notation. So now let's get into some of the more powerful aspects of fluid math. It can actually solve equations. So if I have the equation 3x plus 2 
equals 8, and I want to know what x is, I just draw an arrow, and x equals 2. And if I want to change that equation, I just change it and it automatically updates the answer. It can solve a system of equations. For example, if I want to know what 2a plus 3b equals negative 4, and a minus b equals 6, Let's see, wait a minute. Let me do a minus b equals 6 right there. And then I do a, a comma b. Whoop. There we go. It solves that system of equations. It can solve exponentials. 10 equals e to the point 3t. t is 7.675. And it can solve trig functions, too. Cosine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2, theta is pi over 6. And now this is one of the coolest features of fluid math, which is its graphing capabilities. So let's start with a real simple example. y equals 3x plus 1. So what I'd like to graph that. So I just do a little swoop. And there's the graph. Now in this graph, I can zoom, I can change the scale of the x-axis by going horizontally. I can change the scale of the y-axis by dragging vertically. I can move the global axis here. If I click right there, I can say what I'd like my upper limit to be on the x-axis. Same thing here, I'd like it to be negative 10. Okay, it's just really amazing. Oh, and if I'd like to have a table, there's a table. And dragging this little slider increases the decimal accuracy. Okay. Now, let's say that I'd like to define a parameter m to equal 1. It automatically gives me a little slider there. And then the parameter b, I'll also make that equal to 1. And there's a slider for b. And I can have it hop between discrete values here. And I'll do that right here. And let's graph y equals m x plus b. And I can drag the slider for b over here. And as I move the slope slider, the graph of the line changes, and as I move the y-intercept slider, the line slides up and down the y-axis. So I'm sure you all can see the uh, how useful these making these little sliders can be for all kinds of functions. Okay, so the other day in my pre-calc class, the students didn't understand the difference between the graph of a sine curve and the graph of an arc sine curve. So, I defined f of x to be the sine of x, and I got a graph of that. And we zoomed in a little bit on that. And then I let g of x be the arc sine of x, and I graphed that in the same window. And there they could see very clearly that the blue graph is the inverse of the red graph. And we had a nice discussion on why the blue graph stops and, you know, domain and range and stuff like that. So anyway, that um, is just a basic intro to this new software fluid math that I think is going to revolutionize math instruction.